Hey guys, Seth Fuller, your favorite attorney and your Texas trial champion here. Any YouTube lawyer worth their salt is talking about Alec Baldwin and his recent involuntarily manslaughter charges out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. If you don't know or have been on another planet, Alec Baldwin shot and killed his cinematographer, Helena Hutchins, who was also pregnant, in a tragic mishap on the movie set. It turns out the gun he was using that was a prop was loaded with a real bullet, and when he shot, he killed the poor young lady. The latest development is a district attorney in Santa Fe where the movie was shot has decided to, no pun intended, has decided to file involuntarily manslaughter charges against Baldwin and his armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Now this serves as a shock to everybody and I, I, including myself, that there were criminal charges based on what seemed like an accident, but let's explore that. I think it's actually a really good lesson and a really good example of how the law can go awry. Now I know what you're thinking, Seth, I'm not a movie star. I'm not a celebrity, I'm not an armorer, and I don't handle guns on movie sets. Well, I understand that, but I also understand that this is how the law works, and if you are surprised that this charge came, you should listen to this because it's a lesson in the law and how it's applied and who all it can be applied to, including you. Now, laws differ from state by state, and then the federal government has different laws, and different nomenclatures, different names of things can mean different things. But generally, murder is when you intend to kill somebody and you kill them. Manslaughter is when you don't necessarily intend to kill something, but you do something either really reckless or criminally negligent. So you're so negligent that it rises to a criminal uh, nature. So that basically, if you're just being so dumb and reckless and you kill someone doing that, you are still held re responsible as if you kind of should have known. You are basically have held to should have known that this was a dangerous activity or that you were being reckless. And so that's what the laws in most states reflect because legislatures are pretty careful and then these laws are, led, are, are, are uh, uh, contested in, in the, up, the courts of appeals and appealed all the way up. And so generally laws... Um, are pretty good at narrowing down and kind of encompassing the nature of what they're supposed to. But that's not always the case, and I think that's the problem here with this New Mexico law and why this is perfect for people like me who like to argue about this stuff and, and, and other lawyers because we can look at this and all have different interpretations of the same thing. But keep in mind that the most important thing is at the end of this of whether a jury would find someone guilty of this crime or not. That's the bottom line. The guilty or not guilty coming from a jury of your peers. So first, let's look at the manslaughter statute in New Mexico where this uh, alleged crime occurred. So section 30-2-3 of the New Mexico statutes is manslaughter and it says manslaughter is the unlawful killing of a human being without Malice, and now the again, killing of a human being without malice can be a car accident. It happens every day on our roads. There's no malice, and someone dies, and it's not a crime. So that word "unlawful" is very important. So it goes on to talk, but the one that they are going to say is involuntary. That uh, excuse me, the prosecutors are going to concentrate on. They're going. They have charged with him with is involuntary manslaughter consists of. Manslaughter committed in the commission of an unlawful act not amounting to felony or in the commission of a lawful act which might produce death in an unlawful manner or without due caution and circumspection. So now trying to figure out which clause belongs to which. So, so is the phrase without due caution and circumspection applying to or in the commission of a lawful act. That's the only way I read it, and I imagine if you go to the case law, that's how it's read. So basically, they are saying that um, Alec Baldwin committed a lawful act without due caution and circumspection. I'm gonna say that again. He committed a lawful act without due caution and circumspection. Now again, this is a manslaughter charge. It's a fourth degree um, felony, and since it's with a firearm, it's actually an aggravation. But everyone agrees, everyone agrees this was an accident. There was no intention. So that's what manslaughter is generally for. Now, again, in most places, you have this criminal, criminal part of it, but there's not, no such thing here. So under this law, let's talk about what might be considered manslaughter. 
let's say you're driving and you don't get your brakes checked regularly and you have a light that says go in and and uh, go go in for inspection you know my car has a check engine light which is the real bad thing but every certain set of miles it says go get your oil change and every certain set of miles it says go get your car checked out if i ignore that and my brakes go out and my brakes go out and i slam into someone is that involuntary manslaughter well under this certainly seems like it applies I was committing a lawful act, driving my car. We know cars are dangerous. We know car accidents happen every day. And car accidents cause death every single day on roads across the world. And I didn't, I, uh, without due caution and circumspection. What is that phrase mean? Without due caution and circumspection. That is a completely benign phrase that essentially allows the jury to find any act where someone dies, possibly manslaughter. Because who keeps their car 100% inspected? What accident occurs without some degree of lack of caution or lack of circumspection? What, what death occurs without that? Not a lot. So this leaves open a huge amount. So now, and this is what I wanted to uh, highlight about the law, and this happens everywhere. I, I can give you example after example where it's up to the DA whether they want to, on any given car accident, file a manslaughter charge. And then it's up to the jury to determine what is due caution and circumspection. And Really, what should happen is the legislature should be more careful. The voters should keep the legislature in check by making sure that they're drafting just laws. But nobody knows about this and nobody thinks about this. And certainly, nobody wants to tell the victim's family, like this poor pregnant lady who is just a cinematographer on a movie, that they don't deserve justice because that person really didn't commit a criminal act. And, and, and that's where we get a problem. So... I understand that this is Alec Baldwin and so and that this lady died and she shouldn't have died and that somewhere, somewhere should be liable. And in fact, one of his crew members, uh, David Hall, I believe it was, uh, was um, uh, was took a deal, took a plea for negligent discharge of a firearm or negligent handling of a deadly weapon, something that an even lower misdemeanor charge. I'm assuming he's the one who's going to testify to what they think will result to the without due caution, basically the negligent. But again, there's no, there's nothing about negligence here. It says without due caution and circumspection. So you don't even have like that negligent standard. And that's crazy. And so I would say that that what Alec Baldwin did for as far as I know, unless it comes out that he was one. Now, there was reports that some of the cast members, the reason the bullet was in the gun is because some of the cast members went off and shot those guns. You're never supposed to do that. But they put live ammunition on them and shot them and that's how it got left over. If he was one of those people or he knew that they did that as a producer and he had the power to stop it, that's where I see this coming in. And that could be the case. And so kind of reverse on everything I said, I still don't think that it comes to manslaughter. I think he gets the same thing that Hall guy pled to, negligence, uh, negligence around a deadly weapon. Because the the word is that the, 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 the so far reports are that somebody who is in charge of keeping the gun safe handed the gun to Alec Baldwin and said cold and had checked it. Now, if you go through the long list of movie uh, safety protocols, the actor is supposed to check the weapon. So again, do I think that under this law, some jury could find him guilty? Absolutely, just by that. Just on what we know happened. He said cold, he said okay, he shot the gun and he killed the poor lady. Do I think that's just? Not in a second. And more importantly, do I think a jury would find it? No. But now I want you to think about how this is being used. First of all, I think it is for sure a power play by the DA. That's not surprising. They're almost all elected. I'm assuming in New Mexico, that's no different. And so they want to get reelected. They have victims that they have to account for. So this poor lady's family is like, how did our person die? We want this person held responsible. You have the armorer who almost certainly probably is guilty of this. 
Probably. And I but I don't know how they're gonna get her. There's some stuff of what what is a lawful act that she committed, handing the gun to I don't know that they can reach that. And that's the problem when you have bad laws. This is a bad law. I'm telling you, it's a bad law. Because I'm, as a lawyer, can't tell my client, can't tell you. It's like, what What could I get in trouble for what I can't? I can't tell you what's limited here. Basically, I go, man, you're kind of rolling the dice every time you go out in a car. <laughs> you know, you're rolling the dice every time you, you handle any weapon. And so I don't think that's just. And uh, I think a, there's, a, there's a huge problem here. Now, I don't know the case law. I'm assuming there's case law in this. I'm not a New Mexico lawyer. So why am I talking? Because maybe you'll watch it and I'll get views and maybe I'll go, you, you know the reason. You know why you're here. Uh, but in any, in any event, I just would say my gut reaction is this is an overcharged, overcharged by a DA and that they're wanting to get some sort of uh, some sort of deal where he pleads to the lesser included, probably that negligent handling of de deadly weapon. And then once that happens, the family has an automatic win in, 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 in any civil lawsuit because they basically, Alec Baldwin would could, could be personally liable uh, apart from the movie insurance, and this family could be compensated for their loved one. But I don't think that the criminal law should be used that because for every Alec Baldwin, there's just you, the poor Joe Schmo, who just tries to follow the law and tries to do their best. And then for some reason, somebody, a police officer, a DA, somebody along those lines gets a wild hair in their ass and just decides, I'm going to charge this one. And now you're in the justice system. You have to pay a defense attorney like me, hopefully one like me that's good, that'll get you that not guilty, thousands and thousands of dollars to be exonerated. And all the way along the line, you're facing prison time. In New Mexico, you're facing up to 18 months in prison. Just think of that, a year and a half of your life out. Sure, you, the law-abiding citizen, aren't going to get that, but you're also a registered felon. You won't have to be able to get places to stay. I mean, we all know this is bad stuff, and for sure, you're going to get a plea deal as a Joe Schmo, but maybe not. Maybe if there's a victim's family who you didn't really do anything wrong, but they're pushing because they think you did. Whatever the case may be, it is a real life thing. This happens every day. And the, the likelihood of it happening to you is very, very low. But the likelihood of you doing something about it, if it happens to you, is equally as low because you're just in the system, taking the plea deal, in the plea trap system where you're like, I could either do 18 months in prison or I could take a misdemeanor and be on probation for 12 months and pay $700 to the state and all this and then have this misdemeanor on my record, maybe get it off after a couple of years. But you can see how it spirals down into this is a problem. This is a real problem. And then you talk about this vicious cycle where you make a mistake and you get this. And then you make another equally, just, just not as no bad intentions, but just make another mistake and you get an even worse sentence. This time they're not going to deal with you. This time they're not going to drop it down to misdemeanor. This time you are going to do some time in prison. This happens every day, and it's a lesson, and I, and and it's 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 a double-edged sword. Of Alec Baldwin has is is targeted. I truly believe because of his celebrity and because of the status of the case and the amount of money involved in this sort of thing. But I also think he has the resources to fight this. And I would say I almost wager anybody that he's not going to come away with a guilty on a. Uh, uh, involuntary manslaughter because he has the resources. But what we have to understand is there's a Joe Schmo out there who has a weird set of circumstances that puts him in the same situation as Alec Baldwin and they don't have the resources to get out of that situation like Alec Baldwin does. So in any event, that's my appraisal. I'll try to keep you updated with any real... Um, th real uh, updates because who knows it could be that he was the one who went out and shot that very gun and that he was just knew that things were going badly that everyone was being careless that the armor had not checked the gun maybe they could prove all that and all this is out the window because then you know he should be facing that if he was reckless if he was criminally negligent then for sure he should face the same justice as as that Joe Schmo would but 
I don't see it from the facts so far. I think this is stretching and overcharging, which is a lesson to all of us that that's what they do because when they overcharge, then when you get the deal of what you should have been charged with to begin with, you're very happy about it instead of saying, no, I made a mistake and I want to go to trial on it. In any event, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, Like, subscribe, whatever, all that stuff. Thank you for listening and have a good one.